will show you today how to calculate the software delay and the hardware delay in big microcontrollers. So let's begin to see the difference first between the software delay and hardware delay. Software delay basically it depends on the execution time of the uh, instruction of big microcontroller. So basically if we go to the instruction sheet yeah so if we see the instruction sheet of uh, the big microcontroller instruction we see that each instruction has uh, an execution cycle which means that e like each instruction has number of cycles that they need in order to be executed for example if we see the wf it has one cycle in order to be executed and wf for example it has also one like decrement uh, file skip f0 it can be one or two so most of the instructions basically they are one except a few other instruction like call uh, instruction which has two cycles and go to instruction has two cycles so the, uh, the delay can be calculated based on the time takes to execute the instruction so this is how the software delay works uh, the hardware delay however it depends on the timer so each uh, big microcontroller has a different type of timers for example the 16 f 877 a has three timers like here we have a timer zero these are defined by the way in the data uh, memory in bank zero so we have timer zero timer one and uh, which has basically two registers that means it's 16 bit size and there is timer 2 we use hardware uh, we use timer 0 for the hardware delay which means we have an 8 bit of timer 0 to calculate the hardware delay so the instruction cycle uh, is used to calculate the the software delay and timer 0 is used to calculate that what we call it the hardware delay how this works let's start doing that okay so for the software delay basically let me just type software delay the delay itself is equal to a big C which is a constant times the execution time needs to uh, to execute the, the instruction so execution time of instruction instruction this is the software delay c is a constant a big c i call it which can be of different constants that can be like c1 times C2 times dot 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 C sorry Cn so each C represent a constant and this constant we can do a loop a number of times of C1 or loop of number of times of C2 so what we do in software delay basically we a uh, keep repeating the execution of the instruction to certain amount of C1 and C2 this is a software delay the hardware delay however delay let's make it delay it has the same equation however the, there is some other difference so it has the big C times 
the execution of the instruction. You just copy and paste it here. All right. So what's the difference? The difference is in the big C. The big C in hardware delay, it's uh, equal the timer zero, the amount of timer zero, so times the value of the prescaler times C1 times C2, if we have loops, times C, C. All right. So this is the difference between the software delay and hardware delay. The software delay basically depends on the execution time of the instruction, and we basically do a kind of counters or loops so that we keep repeat executing executing these instructions. However, in the hardware delay, we use the the value of timer zero, where timer zero is like a counter. Uh, and we have also a prescaler. Prescaler is it's like a kind of stretching the timer. So instead of like we have a fast timer, we can slow down the timer in a certain uh, amount. So timer zero, it's uh, a register. Timer zero, it's a register, and it's. It's an, it has an 8-bit register, which is basically range the value from 0 to, uh, let me just do it this way, from 0 to 255. So what does it mean? It's, it began counting like 0, 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and zero 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 one zero so let's keep counting until it reach back to the uh, zero value so it's like when it gets overflowed it's it start getting counting again zero so at the end here we have one 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 and then it goes back to the zero the prescaler is like stretching the the amount of the or the period of the timer zero so basically we are slowing down the timer. so let me just show you some hints about uh, timer zero all right so this is the timer zero let me just get back all right here yeah timer zero is one of the interrupts or one of the uh, internal interrupt that uh, available within the big microcontroller. So if we see uh, the uh, the bit bit number uh, five, this is a timer uh, enabler for timer zero interrupt. So when there is an overflow, there gonna be like when this is enabled, there gonna be a flag will be set to one when the the timer zero interrupt is enabled so the flag will turn to one so what we do in the hardware delay basically we keep watching the the flag of timer zero when it becomes one that means it, it's an overflow and it's changing from all ones the 255 into back uh, back to into zeros okay so we can use this interrupt of timer zero to build a hardware delay so let me just show you another thing about timer zero okay this is action register yeah so this is a slide let me just make it uh, make it 130 all right so this is timer zero basically timer zero uh, can be produced by external source through a uh, port A or it can be defined as internal within the microcontroller so if the value is 1 
that means we are going to produce timer zero using external source like uh, for example crystal uh, oscillator or we can produce it internally if the value of bit at bit number five is zero uh, as for prescaler uh, bit number three in option register by the way it's called option register uh, if it's zero bit number three the PSA prescaler assignment bit that means we are assigning the the prescaler to timer zero the, if it's one we're gonna assign the prescaler to a watch the watch dog timer so here in the prescaler basically we are stretching or slowing down the timer so this is a ratio of if uh, from bit zero two uh, zero one and two if the bit uh, value is zero 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 that means the ratio of one to two uh, that means if that uh, the, the timer zero is slowed down to into like by two by a ratio of two if it's zero zero one it's gonna be like four so the maximum value of slowing down the timer it's 256 all right so this is how the timer zero works so basically we need option register and we use int con register in order to, to watch the, the flag Okay, let me just get back to this, this equation here and let me just delete that. All right, so let's start if we, if let's say if we need a delay. Of one second. And what's uh, what do we have? We have uh, an oscillator of 4 megahertz 4 megahertz this is the frequency of the oscillator so in order to uh, calculate the execution time of the instruction we need we use the frequency of the oscillator which basically we have something called instruction cycle is instruction cycle okay which is equal if oscillator divide by four in our case if it's four megahertz divide gonna be like divide by four that means we have instruction cycle of one megahertz So if we have a big microcontroller which is ha which has a, a uh, an oscillator of four megahertz, that means the cycle needs instruction cycle is going to going to be in on, on a on a on a frequency at a frequency of four, of one megahertz. So the speed of execution the the instruction is going to be like one megahertz. And if we get back to the let me just get back to, let me just get back to the instruction sheet so this is the cycle this is the instruction cycle which means that here we have instruction cycle of at wf is going to be uh, one megahertz and as you know that the relationship between the let me just highlight this and show that the relationship between frequency at time time is actually equal one over frequency so in our case we have the execution of the instruction will equal execution instruction control v equal one over one megahertz which that's equal one micro let me just do it this way if I go to the insert yeah yeah micro second so one micro second so if I have a delay of one second we say delay equal equal to a uh, big C times 
uh, one microsecond which is the execution time that leads us to c big c equal one second divided by one microsecond that would equal one million so we need one million of instructions in order to execute to produce a one second delay how we gonna do that so we need to divide the the one million into different type of constant the first constant is what we call it the internal loop so we have an internal loop within our code here we have an, uh, we can define a number of instructions that we keep repeat executing them and basically what we use we use a no operation instruction we use decrement file skip f0 instruction and we use go to instruction the no operation instruction has one cycle and the decrement file skip f0 has one cycle and go to has four cy two cycles so basically in the internal loop at least we have four cycles and we can actually add as much as we need for the no operations okay this is one thing let's say so basically if we have an internal instruction an internal loop that has no operation no operation decrement file uh, skip f0 and go to which means we have five so now c which is one million big c one million equal one million divide by five that would be two hundred thousand okay so this is the first thing so we have an internal loop of five cycles now we have two hundred thousand now we can use c1 and c2 and c3 as much as we can as we know that the maximum value for the register is the maximum value of c1 or c2 is it will be range from 0 to 255 255 which is in binary 0000 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1111111 okay so we can use the maximum value of 255 but since 255 it's if we divide 200,000 by 255 is going to be uh, they're going to be like uh, uh, digits so we can use less than 255 let's say let's make c1 equal uh, 200 so which this means that big C uh, so 200 thousand divide by 200 that would be equal 1000 so we still we have another constant call is 1000 so we need to divide it more to get like C2 which would be equal also 200 let's make it uh, 100 so it's gonna be 1000 divided by 100 that would equal to 10 so in the in our in, uh, in our calculations we have now three variables C1 C2 C3 and internal loop so the internal loop would have five cycles and we have C1 would have uh, 200 C2 would have 100 and C3 would have 10 now if we multiply everything and we get back to the equation so our delay is going to be delay equal uh, 
the whole C's which is the 200 times the 100 times the 10 times the, the internal loop times the one microsecond control copy control V this will lead us to one second okay so this is how the software delay is calculated for the software delay for the hardware delay let me just copy the hardware delay here put it below So same thing, we have an execution time of one microsecond. Execution time of one microsecond. Control V because we are using the same frequency, four megahertz. And now we have the maximum value of timer zero. It's, it's going to be within a range of 0 to 255. 255, that means we have 256 values of timer 0. And the maximum value of the prescaler will be prescaler would be also 256. Okay, and we can have C1, C2, C3 as much as we can. Okay. So let's calculate how much going to be like C1 and if we need them or C2 or C3. Now we have uh, the delay is one second times one second equal big C times the execution of instruction. Sorry, let me. One microsecond, which leads us to C big C equal one million. Same thing. Now, if we divide timer zero, the value of timer zero is going to be one million divided by two hundred fifty-six. That would equal. Let me just calculate that. That would equal to 3906.25. Okay, so this is if we have timer zero of value 256. Now we need to calculate the prescaler. So basically, we divide this value by the maximum value of the prescaler, which is again 256. So divide uh, 3906.25 divided by 256 that would equal to 15.287 which means we have a constant C1 of 15 number 15 as approximately we can make it we can make C1, we just need C1 by the way, C1 equal 16, because we have it in 15. And so basically it, the, the closest value to the 15 is 16. We take the maximum value. Okay. Now let's do the calculation again. So we have big C. In our case equal timer zero value times rescaler times C1. But you know as since we have an approximate value of C1 we need to a uh, 
we calculate the value of timer zero okay which means we have 1 million val value here of big C equal to timer zero times the scalar we keep it 256 times 16 that will lead us to timer zero equal to let me just calculate that 254 254 that means we need 254 uh, counts we don't need the whole range of two timer zero we just need 254 that means timer zero had to start with a value of 256 minus 244 which equals to uh, 12 that means timer zero instead of starting from 0 to 255 it would start from 12 and up to 155 all right so now Let's do the calculation of the delay of the hardware delay. This will equal delay would equal to timer zero, which is 254 times uh, 256 the scalar times 16 times one microsecond. Let me just copy and paste that. Control V. That would equal to it should be let me just check that it should be equal to 244 times 256 times 16 times one microsecond that's equal 0.999424 which is almost one second so this is the calculations this is the way how we do it uh, I will start doing the source code after the break thanks start doing the software delay based on the following specification so we have internal loop of five cycles which means we have loop instruction and another loop instruction with decrement uh, file skip if zero uh, then we have the go to which has two cycles so the total is five cycles <coughs> then we have a uh, first loop which has a, a, a counter of 200 and the second loop which has a counter of 100 then the third loop which has a counter of 10 we're also going to do the hardware delay where we have give me a sec here where we have a, a timer that start with a 12 decibel and we have a prescaler of a 256 with one counter which has 16 Okay, let's start doing that. Let me go to the MP Lab, new project, standalone, next. So I'll pick the mid range and the 16F8777. 16F877A, next. Simulator. next let's call it software hardware delay all right now we click on the source file and we'll type the assembly code let's call it uh, software hardware 
Polis polis dulu ya. Dulu ya. Alright. So let's begin with the the software delay. Me just copy and paste the requirements so that I can see them. All right. So this is uh, software delay with the following specification. And let's type the hardware delay also. Hard delay <coughs> we just copy the specification so we have a timer 0 of 256 and we have just one counter C1 equal 16 I guess yeah just double check that yeah 16 okay <coughs> now let's start with the software delay first of all we need P16A77A.inc. Then we originate 00 and end. What I will do now, I will write two subroutines. Each subroutine will do a one second delay. So I need. For constant C block C block zero x seventy. So basically, we have C one, C two, and C three, and also we have something called X one, which is for the hardware delay. I'll do the same, the software delay and the hardware delay in the same program. In C. Good. Now, in order to do the software delay, first we need to write the internal loop, which I mentioned here. So the internal loop has five cycles, which means it will have knob. Let me just do two subroutines. Let's call the first one sub software delay and we have here return return okay so a soft our software delay we have a no operation no operation decrement file skip f0 and go to go to A loop. So we have this go to L1. So what do we need? What we need to do is to have C1 in the first internal loop 200. So basically, we decrement C1 and we return to F. We keep decrementing. until it will reach it will reach zero then it will skip the loop okay so this is the first one and then we need to decrement uh, decrement file 
escape f0 c2 and we do return it to f and when we do another go two so we would have another l2 so this is l2 and we will have something in here let's call it l2 then we will have another loop for c3 where c3 equal 10 equals 10 so we'll have decrement file skip f0 c3 and f which means it will return to c3 and then we have go to go to l3 and we have l3 at the top l3 okay so what do we need to do here basically we need to let me just say bank select here just to make sure that i am in the bank one bank zero sorry so here what do i need to do i need to do a move lw decimal the value of c1 which is 200 if you look at c1 here we have c1 equal 200 we put there and we move it to move wfc1 so it will fill the value of 200 of c1 then it will start doing that loop the internal loop this is what we call the internal loop so every time it will check c1 if it's not zero it will keep decrementing it until c1 becomes zero so this loop will be done 200 times okay now once it's finished it will decrement c2 c2 has a value of 100 so basically in l2 we need to have move lw decimal 100 and then move wf c2 okay that's good now right now here we have c2 it will be 100 then c1 it will be 100 the internal loop will keep decrementing c1 until it becomes zero then it will decrement c2 then it will go to c1 to l2 it will increase it will fill c1 again to 200 so basically th this means that between l2 and l1 we have an execution instruction of 200 times 100 times the five cycles now the last loop is for c3 where we have move lw decimal I guess it should be 10 yeah 10 and move wf c3 so 200 will be filled 100 times where 100 times will be filled 10 times so the whole thing it will be 200 times 100 times 10 times the five cycles here so we will keep We'll, we'll repeat executing the five cycles in the internal loop 200 times times 100 times times 10 times so this is how it works this is the internal loop sorry this is the software delay once it's done it will return so in the main program what I will do I just need to create a loop and I'm gonna do go to loop I'm just gonna call software delay delay well this is good so it's just going to do a call delay let me just put no operation 
just for the sake of an instruction, any instruction. So no operation before and no operation after. And it will count one second. We'll call it software delay and the software delay will do a one second. Let's try executing the software delay. We have two errors. So the first error, yeah, this is wrong to be delay. Yeah. Okay, looks good. Let me just run it. Now it's running. Let me pause it and we do a reset to start from the beginning. All right. Now we need to count the delay. So go to Windows, debugging, stopwatch. Okay, so this is our stopwatch. Let me just raise it up a little bit. Yeah. So if we execute, so this is our starting point. Now we do the stopwatch. Run it again, continue. So as you see that we have the time is 1.0404 second, which means that the software where delay is working perfect. There is an extra few milliseconds or microseconds, which is we don't care about it. So this is the software delay. Let's do the hardware delay. Okay, so let's call it hardware delay and we do a subroutine for that all right now in hardware delay it's a little bit tricky because we have some registers we need to define first of all we need to check uh, first of all we need to set a value initial value for timer 0 since we needed to do it to, like the timer 0 will count for 244 so we need to start start value of 12 I guess yeah 12 256 yeah so start value is equal 12 all right so we need to do move LW decimal 12 and then we need to move it WF to timer 0 then we need to, to go to the option register where we need to define a prescaler of 256 so the option register the last the first three bits they need to be uh, all ones so that means uh, here we need to have an option register or let me just type it at the top since we need Briscara to be uh, to be uh, 256 we need to have an option register option register value should be equal 0000, 0, 0, 0. 0111 so this is the prescaler that means it's 256 in hexa it's going to be 0x07 so we need to move we just put it at the top here move lw let me yeah move lw 0x07 and then we move this value to option register so this is looks fine but before we do that we need to go to the bank select we need to go to the bank where the option register is uh, exists so just we need to make sure that we are there option register okay 
you probably need to move to the bank also just to make sure bank select a timer timer zero if we don't remember if you don't remember that where the register exists in which bank you just each register you define the you select the bank of the register so now we have the option register which has a value of 0, 07 which is in order to define prescaler scalar of 256 we have initial value of timer 0 of 12 which achieves gives us a 244 uh, time uh, count timer count okay now we need to have a loop of uh, c1 which has 16 so probably we need to do it somewhere uh, somewhere here we need to do it somewhere here so move lw decimal uh, 16 and then we need to move it move w we call it actually x if you remember here if you see here at the top we have this value just call it x one to differentiate it from the software delay variables so we'll just call it x1 x1 all right so now we need to make a loop We need to make a loop and let's call it because we have L1, L2, let's call it L, uh, let's call it S1. Uh, go to S1. S1. Now in this loop, we just need to check bit test, test file, escape bit this file escape if set we need to check the end con register uh, for the timer zero timer timer zero interrupt flag yes if interrupt zero timer yeah I think like this. So we are checking the the timer zero flag, which is I guess it should be in, on zero one two. I guess it should be in. If you go to the end con, you will see that the flag of timer zero is at bit number two. So we check if if the flag of timer zero sets to one. That means it the counter has an overflow. So we need to skip the loop. We just do a counter. Then we need to make a BCF. We need to clear the the flag. Control B. So this is our loop. It's just going to keep counting, checking that the flag has been set to one. If it's been set to one, it's going to sk to skip the go to the loop, and it will reset sorry uh, res yeah, reset the value of the uh, the the timer zero flag now we need to uh, do a counter decrement file skip f0 for x1 and we put it in f so also we need to to do a, a we can need to decrement x1 which has a value of 16 and then we need to go to somewhere in the top go to uh, go to let's call it here s2 and go to s2 so this is our main loop if you see what we do in this loop basically we go to timer zero we set a value of 12 and timer zero then we start checking the the counting of timer zero when it reached 200 to 255 and gets back to zero that means it's, there is an overflow and that means uh, the bit of uh, timer zero flag 
which is an end cone register at bit number two is going to be one uh, that means we will skip we will jump over the the loop and we will reset the value and then uh, the decrement will decrease the value of x which is already start with 16 it will be 15 and it will go back again and it will set the value of the timer zero this is should this is how it's gonna work let me just give it a try okay so we have a knob here let me just put call hardware delay and let's give it a try for the hardware delay we already checked the software delay let's give it a try for the hardware delay we just build the program looks good no errors and let's do the run okay so let me just reset it i like to start from the beginning now we have the stopwatch then we execute we'll stop at the beginning of the, uh, the delay hardware delay uh, do a counter then run it's 1.02141 so as you see that we have a software delay 